This is Damon Stevens from Criminal Builders. Today is Monday, August 22nd, 2022. This stock market update for our trades of the day. Uh, hopefully you were along with the rest of them and taking some profits today as the market continued to drop from uh, last Friday. Uh, now, it hit a level that I didn't expect today. Uh, and a lot more sell-off and gap down than what I expected. Uh, so we already came into the critical level that I thought would take a few days. Uh, but seeing a similar pattern that we saw before. So let's get into it, take a look at what's going on. That way you guys are prepared for whatever comes around next. Uh, looking at the, uh, you know, quickly on the market here, you can see Dow Jones closed down 1.91%, NASDAQ down 2.55%, and S&P 500 down 2.14%. We, on this heat map, we are just red as can be, just bleeding red there. Uh, but you know, the one thing is, you know, this drug, this is one of the ones that was on our Thursday uh, chat. And, uh, you know, it hit again today. I mean, it not as high um, as we had on Thursday. But let's get in the chart and take a look at what's going on. Just see kind of what the opportunity was. Because, you know, this is one that was on our radar. This is, uh, you know, this was uh, last Thursday at where we got that run from 87 cents up to 475, which just was a killer. But again, you know, pre-market ran half the, half the run. But it was already on our scanner, you know, market open uh, and topped out. And then just it just sold off. And then it sold off all the way through Friday, you can see as well. And then uh, the weekend here, you know, on Monday, right off the bottom, you know, we're 115 over the weekend, 127, 131 on up, uh, the open, ran up here to three, a little over $3. So about three bucks, hung around there and pulled back down. Now, one thing it did differently than did Friday is, in, you know, we sold all the way down under the moving averages. Uh, but today we're sitting right on that 20. So looking for a possible another play on drug again. Here where it's sitting at $2 now. Will it go higher? I mean, it's possible. But, you know, the thing I don't like is this was a, a lower high uh, today. So I don't know if it has more uh, more umph in it. But I do like that it stayed above the 20. So we'll see if we get another trade out of that. But definitely something from uh, last Thursday uh, that gave us another run today. APRN, this is another one uh, that you can see here. Had a nice little rally here from uh, 472 in pre-market, you know, up to 520. And then it ran up, you know, till 636. And then after hours, I didn't catch this one because I, I stopped watching it here for the day because uh, I was watching earnings on the Zoom, uh, looking at Zoom and some of the other calls we'll talk about. But uh, boy, it ran right back up here, the 690 area. So we're right back at the highs again on the close. Um, my curious curiosity is, is, you know, if it holds here overnight, we might have a pullback close down to the six dollar range, and maybe run up, maybe just to seven fifty or eight dollars. <clears throat> so we're, I'll see, uh, you know, in the morning if this can give us another play. But APRN definitely on our watch list here. And then talk about earnings here. Uh, this is also important. So Zoom and Palo Alto, those were the ones I was watching today. Um, Zoom, you know, dropped off for us. Palo, Palo Alto, we'll, we'll cover these in the charts. Nice little run there. Looking for these to uh, to give us another play tomorrow, but also on Tuesday you can see kind of a you know pretty busy you know day this week. Um, you know on Tuesday we have Macy's, uh, JD.com, we got Dick's Sporting Goods and Dole. Uh, you know definitely, and I I didn't mark this out, but Toll Brothers also on the after the close of tomorrow, and I'll also watch Nordstrom's. Just really, I mean, this week you get a good idea on retail. And retail kind of sets the tone for the end of year because that's when you have all the holiday sales um, and everything going on. And typically, that's a good time for retail. So really curious this week to see what they're saying because uh, that's going to help us to understand possibly what they're expecting, at least this next quarter, um, if not into the end of the year. So on Wednesday, critical ones on the, after the close, NVIDIA, Salesforce, Snowflake, Autodesk, Splunk, Big Techs, a lot of techs, and NetApp, uh, and then Box. So a lot of Big Tech on Wednesday. So, I, you know, obviously Big Tech is what I spend a lot of time around. So definitely interested in that. But um, And then we have a couple of retail. And then Thursday, Peloton, which just got killed. Uh, we have Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Burlington, Coat Factory, um, just major ones on Thursday, uh, Alta, Gap. And then some techs in there as well, which I'm you know, excited to see, you know, Dell and VMware, you know, Workday to see what goes on there. Um, so we'll see. And then we have a, a solar here on Friday, but, um, you know, busy week for earnings. So definitely looking to take advantage of those. Just be careful if you're trading earnings. 
they can be very risky. Uh, so, you know, uh, typically I kind of watch for the momentum and which direction they're going uh, before I get in. More of it's more of a scalping than anything else. Uh, but if you're not familiar with trading earnings, definitely recommend you stay out. Uh, very volatile, can move really quick. I mean, I've seen these things move, you know, $30, $50 in a matter of a couple of minutes. So important to, that you know what you're doing. So here's Pan W. So you see here, this just really like skyrocketed, um, you know, after hours after the uh, closing here, uh, you know, clear up here to the very top of my uh, dev uh, deviation bands, the third band out here. So we're already up at the top here. It pulled back from that third deviation band. So then we watch this for the morning because we're like over this high here back on August 11th. So I'm kind of looking for a pullback, at least into this zone area down here, uh, 535 area, and then see if we, we get another pop in the morning. And then on Zoom, uh, Zoom just kind of been on decline. You can see here, our trend line here just continues to decline here. Broke below all the moving averages, just kind of been selling off the last several days, and then boom, earnings were, were you know worse. And you know, Zoom, I expected it would be. This was one of those pandemic plays, which just you know killed it. Uh, and then they've just kind of been on a downward slope since then, um, just because uh, you know more people are back in the in the office and at work, and I I think they just kind of kind of lost their uh, luster in the market. But you see here, we're down to eighty seven dollars, eighty seven, eighty eight. So we'll see, you know, do we get a little pop up tomorrow morning? Maybe we get a run up and back down. We'll see kind of how the market wants to react on Zoom. But Zoom is definitely a down here in after hours. All right. So and let's look at options. So stock options. So calls are when people take contracts to go long on the market. Puts is when they uh, short the market. And you see here right now, this is the S&P 500. And uh, these are maturities on the week, uh, the end of the week. And you can see here right now, uh, there's tons of people with calls at 415. Obviously, we're above that. We're at 421 area. Uh, so these guys are, you know, in in profits right now. Here's the next spike up here at 430. Uh, and so, you know, do we get back up there? It's possible. As you can see, it kind of drops off here on, on the number of calls. And but uh, this one right here is paying right now. This is paying people right now. So we'll see, you know, do they take, uh, you know, profit early or do they let this kind of right out that we can see if we can get, you know, up a little bit further. But at least these guys are all in profit right now. So that's a good thing for them. But these red ones are puts, people shorting. So you see the biggest spike here at 420. Now we're above 420 slightly. So these, uh, all these guys want to push it down. They want the market to come down. Um, so they can profit here, which would take these calls out. So we're kind of like a little sandwich here. So we've got a couple of little but walls right here almost. You know, this little range here at 421. You know, and, uh, you know, this range here at 415. You know, we're we're kind of right in between. So this could be, you know, a lot of resistance here. Uh, but we could have a little bit of resistance up here as well. Because, you know, these spikes aren't small. But not as large as these, so that's it could be definitely a resistance. But you can see here, uh, there's 2.6 uh, people shorting the market uh, on these uh, contracts to be in long. So obviously the bears are still out there, still trying to push the market, want the market to come down to pay them out. So just something to keep in mind. But right now the max pain is 420. We're 421. We're right in the zone that the market would like to keep everything at least right now till the weekend uh, to, you know, make the most money and create the most pain for all those people who are buying calls and puts. So just something to be aware of. Max pain or right close to it. We'll see if the market keeps us, uh, keeps us here or, uh, or if it decides to, you know, take a direction. But if you definitely have, definitely subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to FinWealth Live on our YouTube channel, uh, and that way we can continue bringing these videos to you, bring updates uh, also, we, you can see here we're doing live streaming as well. Uh, so we would love to, to have you come join the community uh, and hopefully help you, uh, you know, learn some new skills and help you, uh, you know, help you become part of community that, uh, of traders who um, are like minded. And hopefully that will uh, bring uh, bring something to you as well. And also we have a free discord just to let you know um, out here uh, that you can join on our finwealthlive.com website. 
And here you can uh, get to our links, log in, register, uh, and we post our numbers, uh, our trades before the, the market even opens. So we tell you what we're looking at, when we're getting in, when we plan to get out. Um, and that way you kind of see kind of what we're doing. And we post that even before the market opens. So it's not like we're you know, giving you information that's after the fact. We're actually giving it to you before the market starts out. So you know exactly what we're doing. So enough about that. Just go check it out. And also you have a, a video right on the front page um that you can check out as well tell you more about the company what we do uh, looking at the economic calendar here pretty important so uh, definitely pay attention to this uh so you know we'll come into uh tuesday we have pmi in the morning 9 45 eastern time these are east, all eastern time new home sales as well this you know the market's going to open up in like 15 minutes a half hour afterwards we're going to have data coming out so be real careful if you're trading out there because uh, you could see some reversals. Uh, so just be careful. Uh, we don't, I'm not sure where these numbers are going to be. Here's what's expected, but uh, this could be, it could swing things a little bit. Wednesday, uh, you got pending home sales, uh, equipment orders, durable goods, possibly could swing things a little bit. Thursday, jobless claims definitely could. Uh, you got uh, GDP out here, um, SARS out here. Uh, talk, talking about resells, uh, re, uh, real sales out here. So just be careful. This could actually be swing us on Thursday. And then Friday, we have PCE um, numbers coming out. Uh, and uh, we got Fed chair at 10 a.m. So that's uh, Eastern time. Uh, they're in the Jackson Hole retreat, talking about the uh, overall economy, interest rates, inflation, everything else. So that 10 o'clock um, meeting, uh, really could swing things for the week as we close out the week. So just be careful of the volatility this week. There's going to be a lot of guessing on which way the market's going to go and the direction that the, the feds are going to take. So really a critical week, uh, you know, decision week here. And then looking at our stocks, our core stocks, Apple. You see here, we've had this huge bull run. I mean, just amazing. Uh, and we hit the top of this deviation band. Uh, you see, we kind of missed it before, but we hit it uh, because we hit that trend line instead, which caused the bounce down. Here we hit that deviation band and then pull back and we kind of retrace, which is normal. And we're tracing to a good level right now uh, on the 20 day. That's why I was saying, I thought we were, I, I we were going to have a pullback because I you can see that on my videos last week. And I was expecting a pullback here because we we're getting really close to those deviation bands. We did, but I thought it was going to, you know, instead of this big, huge gap down, I thought we'd take, you know, take our time. But the 20, 20 day moving average is just like right here on the support line that we had, which is, you know, the top of this candle. So we're almost there. So, you know, my question is tomorrow, since this ended at the bottom, does this come down, dip down here, hit that 20 day moving average, find support and bounce off, or maybe even come range bound in this area between, you know, this 166 and 171 here on Apple. So we're going to be watching for that. If we break below the 20, we have a lot of weakness and we have a long way down. So this is definitely a critical time right now. Chipotle pulling back as well. In this little range here, you can see these big bars we have here. This, this should hopefully trap that in there. You can see otherwise 1645 should be support. It did come down here, tag that, closed just below 1645. So, you know, obviously broke it. But we're engulfed in these candles, so I'm hoping it stays there, at least stays range bound until it you know, gets a direction uh, with the market. Uh, looking at Tesla, nice pullback here as well. You can see here this double top. You know, and here's the neckline. Uh, so we haven't got down there yet. Eight eight thirty four is either going to be support and on that neckline, and we're going to bounce back up, or if we break that, then we can become range bound in this next range. Uh, which is 1834 back to, you know, 1765 range. So just so, trying to see, you know, where is Tesla going to sit here uh, as it comes down, but definitely looking, you know, possibly for, you know, at least a spike down here from Tesla. We'll see if we come down there and touch that neckline there. Microsoft, you know, hit, well, you can see here, right here, deviation bands, hit them here, hit them here, pull back, a pull back. Now, see, this is funny because this gap down in this grouping for three days on the, above the 200-day moving average, this gap down too, past this range here, um, which is funny, you know, this candle to this candle, that's the, the gap. 
uh, and came right down here to our top of our trend line. And that's where it found support. But it got below the 20 and below the 200 where it found support before. So going to see if this can, you know, do we become sandwiched in here with all these moving averages? Or do we get a pop off of this, um, you know, this uh, trend line up here? Now here we didn't get past the trend line. Here we did. And, you know, if we break down through this trend line, then we have, you know, a long, you know, a long place to, to drop. So that's why, you know, again, this is a critical area because we're just kind of sitting here right on these uh, support and resistance lines across the market. Amazon gapped down below the 20 day and then came down. So we we're sandwiched between the 20 and the 100. So again, we got to break out of one or the other to get some direction here. On NVIDIA, you see that we came down here, tagged the support line. You see here kind of where we came up, bounced through it back to the 20, all the way back up, back down to the support line, back up, and now we're right back here again. Same area that we were before. So you can see here some strength there. Uh, so we'll see if this holds, should hold here, uh, you know, based on the strength we have, unless the market gets really weak. So looking for a bounce off this 170, we, be, could, we could become range bound between these two ranges because you see we came up, back down, back up, back down. So we may range back, you know, kind of between, you know, this 170 and 192 area until the market gets some direction. Looking at Google here, you can see that Google kind of came up here. Got to the 200-day moving average. That's where it found rejection. So it didn't get to the top of our deviation band. Did get to, to the 200 and re got rejected. Came back down here and it just blew through all all the uh, de all these uh, moving averages. Uh, so that's very weak. And it's coming down here. Hopefully you can bounce off this 113 level. Uh, that's where we had this breakout. So if we can, maybe become range bound here between this 120 and one 113. If we break 113, we could be come back down towards these lows again. So definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, and again, you know, just definitely check out the video. Continue to subscribe uh, to our channel. Uh, looking at, uh, you know, S&P 500. These are stocks above the 50-day moving average. Uh, you know, we talked about this before. This was kind of an area of resistance before back here in March of 2019, and again, June of 2020, and again, of April 5th, and we were right back here again, and guess what happened? We pulled back again, so companies are pulling back again. So we went from this 90, almost 92% of companies over the 50-day moving average down, back down to 78. And I see last time we broke through it and we kind of chopped down below that number. Uh, and you see, see here again also around this 20, 200 day moving average. So do we come down this far down to, you know, 50, almost 60% of companies, you know, break back down below? It's possible. You can see we're on this downward trend before we broke out. So we'll see. This should be support coming up. So hopefully we can keep that uh, momentum going. But just to give you a kind of general idea, government balance, bonds, 10 year yields, if these come up, Money's flowing into the bonds. Money might flow out of the market. So that's, you know, seeing these escalate, elevate. You know, we talked about this last week. These break out and head up. More likely the market's coming down. Here's our next area of resistance, the top of this candle. So we're pretty close to it. So we'll see if we continue to bounce up. If we do, market may continue to pull back here a little bit. Two-year yield. Here's our little support line here. And we kind of spiked it, this trend line. And then pull back a little bit. But uh, if this continues to spike up, you know, I'm looking for additional downside. Dollar continues to elevate almost 108.90. So if we break up here, I mean, this again, this typically speaks to gold coming down when I see this. And, uh, you know, the dollars are flowing out of the market. If they're flowing into cash, they're flowing out of the market. And that dollar is definitely elevated. This also speaks to inflation as well. So a little scary that we're getting up that high, almost a new highs again. And to get, oh, here's gold. So you can see the gold coming down. So, you know, it'll continue to break down here as long as, uh, you know, the dollar continues to elevate. So money's flown around in different spots. So you, you got to kind of chase where the, look at where the money's going and that's where you need to be. U.S. oil. So USO, you can see here, just kind of, it's range bound. So it just kind of going to chop back and forth here till we get a breakdown. 
or break out. But uh, right now, for now, I think we're just going to stay range bound. VIX, here's your spike. So we broke out of that. Uh, we're down in this downward channel, broke out, spiked it all the way up. We need to stay below. We're almost through this moving averages. So we need to stay below. If we get above, you know, if we get back to 25, uh, then, you know, definitely look for pullbacks. This has got to come back down, back into these low 20s or 20 to keep the momentum going in the market. Otherwise, you know, if this continues to spike in the morning, then we're looking for more downside tomorrow. On a weekly basis, you know, here's that spike right up to the 50 day and the, and the 20 and we're sitting right at it. So if that does not resist and push this back down, uh, you know, we could have a definitely a red week. Spy on a daily. See, we're in this kind of this little channel going up and we broke it and broke below the 20. So we're sandwiched between the 20 and the 100. Um, so that's not good. You know, I, I thought we were going to definitely find some level of support at the 20 day. Obviously, the market's weaker than uh, and the bears came in and we're able to kind of push it down. So looking for a possible more downside in, and get support, hopefully around this four. 410 area, you know, worst case scenario, and get a bounce back up. On a weekly, you can see here, we came back all the way through that candle. So that candle no longer is holding. These two candles are. Uh, and we have this engulfing candle here. So if we can stay here and bounce, that's great. If not, uh, that means the weakness is back, and we may be coming back, back, back to visit some lows. And that uh, means that little... Bull run was uh, short lived, but you know, hopefully, give you a boost and hopefully helped you feel a little bit better about your long term portfolio for at least a moment. Unless you locked in trade uh, stock, you know, locked in your your earnings, then you're probably excited. Triple Qs sandwiched between the twenty day and the fifty at a hold support, break out above the twenty, hopefully, and recover. Uh, looking at semiconductors, it just blew through everything. So very weak, which is kind of, you know. Kind of makes me nervous here what you know we could possibly come down test some lows again but you see here this was support and finally broke down and broke down hard so we'll see if we can get some support and bounce off back up off of here and get back above that 50 day if not you know we could have more downside and maybe go back towards those lows iwm broke the 20 day um you know you know also so you see 190.44 over here that was support sitting kind of right at it so we need to bounce off of here if we want to keep this bullish momentum and not go back to a bear mode uh fi financials as well you see this run up so you ran up and found resistance right in this area here this was the high and that was resistance came to that same area also it's the top of this deviation band and a rejection back to 20. so we'll see if we pull down further we did last time and that's kind of where we put these lows in and this double bottom um, and we kind of, you know, if you take this this neckline here and double it, I mean, we definitely hit uh, the, the minimum requirements uh, for a double bottom. Uh, so just, uh, you know, where we go from here is just going to be determined. But right now, sitting at that 20 day, hopefully we get a bounce. Uh, looking at healthcare, pull back here, hitting the same one, two, three. So through time through, still fell, came back down. Now we're testing these this low down here. 129.80 is the area that I'm expecting to retest. On the energy sector, it's engulfed in this uh, candle here, so still holding. So we'll see uh, what it can do. But right now, it's definitely right in the, kind of right in the middle there of that candle. So it's definitely holding. Bitcoin, I had to talk about this. It was a bad weekend. Pull back. Now support on our trend line here. You see we had support once, twice. This is the third time. Hopefully we get this, can hold this and kind of bounce back up and run. But right now, seeing some weakness in Bitcoin, Ethereum, same thing. Pull back down to our support line. We tagged it. It looks like, oh, we tagged it twice. So we'll see if we can bounce off here. So this candle right now is kind of where we're at. Um, no, this should be an engulfing candle, engulfing ease. So as long as we don't break below here, we'll, we should be able to hold the support line. If we break here, we might be coming down to 1,500 or lower. Uh, if we can stay in this candle, maybe we can come back and revisit, kind of you know, range bound up to 1,797.
All right. Well, we're just about done here. Um, so again, if you haven't subscribed to Finwell uh, Live, definitely join us. And, uh, you know, this is just showing you kind of what we offer. We have live trading, we have training courses, group training, and one-on-ones. Uh, so those are all the services we provide. That's off our dashboard there. Um, you know, definitely got a master class out here with lots of modules you can look at. Uh, definitely going to help those who are new traders and trying to learn more. And we also have several different strategies that we talk about. So if you're looking for, you know, maybe some new ideas on how to trade the market, uh, we definitely can provide those services to you. So definitely check us out. Uh, in the meantime, everybody have a great night. Uh, have a good safe trade day tomorrow. And we will talk tomorrow night and see how your day went. See how we need to set up for the next day. Everybody have a great night.